this clutch spring looks a little bit um, expanded to me. I'm not sure why that should be. I'm not sure whether somebody's made a mess of it or whether it was always like that. You've got to get this hooked into place correctly. It's got a little tab pointing up there which has to go in that little groove. I'm rotating it here to pull it in snug so that I can slide the outer part of the clutch over it like that. Just checking the action. It should be smooth in one direction, not so smooth in the other. It's certainly moving smoothly. I would say that that spring has got too much tension. It's um, a bit tight. I don't know if I can squeeze that in any, get it to relax slightly. Perhaps I can. Yeah, it looks like someone's had a fight with this previously. It's, let's try it again. If it's got too much tension, it'll just be too stiff. It'll be... That's better. It should have some some controlled slippage, it shouldn't be tight, otherwise you're in danger of tearing um, sprocket holes out of the film. Well that can go in, so I'll lubricate the centre with a bit of synthetic grease, drop that over that shaft, just rotate it so it engages with the slots in the top of the take-up spool. Now there's a guide bush that goes on the top here. It has a little gear on it. So I'm just going to force some grease into those gears because these parts have all been through the degreaser and the cleaner. They're devoid of any lubrication. It sits in there like that. And where's the container? Find the right screws. That little standoff bush goes in there front. One side of its uh, countersunk, make sure that the countersunk side is down. That little ratchet pull goes on there. I normally put a touch of synthetic grease on the top of this so that the ratchet ball revolves smoothly around that collar. I'm not doing that screw right up tight at the moment because if you do it up tight it's very hard to get the shaft down of the sprocket. And I'll put the screw on the other side there, that's the plain screw. And the return spring for that little piece there, that pull, I'll get that into position. Around that screw head. Yeah, that seems to be adequate. 
and I can assemble the rest of the film advance components. Uh, what do I want to do? The gear that runs on the top of that shaft, I'll just put that in place. I'll just put wipe that out with a little bit of synthetic grease. Rotate that. That's fine. This leaf spring doesn't really require much in the way of lubrication, but I normally wipe that with some synthetic grease. Anyway, just a just a gentle wipe. Just it helps preserve that against corrosion. You don't want any corrosion. It's spring steel. It's always a bit prone to uh, corrosion, in my experience. The higher carbon steels. I'll just pop the advance lever under there at the moment, just to support this while I'm getting the other components in place. We've got the drive dog here. A washer and I'm looking at this gear now that's got damage on those teeth there are two teeth here that have got a, a line across them, a mark it's been damaged in some way I'll Put them facing the end of the camera. This does this does not swing through 360 degrees or anything like it. If I put the damaged teeth over here, they will probably never come in contact with the rack. Now how they came to be damaged is a mystery to me. That's not something that you could easily achieve. It's like they've been hit with something. I couldn't see any of that when I dismantled the camera because there was so much dirt and grease there that it was just impossible to see fine details like that to do that screw up. Yeah, that tooth there and this one here, that tooth there in particular. The other teeth look fine. Now, what I need to do now, come on camera, are you going to catch up? Uh, it always picks on something else to focus on, doesn't it? Here we go, it's just waking up. So we've got the catch for the rewind button here. Normally I'll lubricate the tip of that with a little bit of molybdenum paste. That's where it runs on the under, on the other side of that cam. This just slides in under there. I'll take its return spring, sit that in position there. Get the screw in place, then I've got to hook the return spring into its correct position. It's a shoulder screw. One shoulder supports the lever and runs through the centre of the lever, and the other shoulder allows the spring to rotate around it. Yeah. With another pair of tweezers, one's a bit more robust than the ones I've got here, I will pull the engine of that spring into position. Those ones will do nicely. 
we in the picture we are just I've got to lift this end of the spring this end here over that side of that lever like that now that lever is sprung loaded So the sprocket shaft and sprocket need to go in now. So I'm going to lubricate the sprocket shaft at the top where it runs through the body housing, at the bottom where it runs through the body housing. That drops in the hole here and then runs through the sprocket. Just catching on that chrome trim there. Let me lift that back. We'll line this up with the hole in the bottom of the casting. It does not want to fall into place. Let me just loosen these screws up. Make sure this is pulled back out of the way. catching on that chrome trim. Yes it was. That's dealt to. Alright, so if I pull that tab back it allows that to come all the way through. Now it's sitting correctly engaged at the top here. I've got to rotate it till I can see the hole in here and then the screw that drives it can go through there. At the base, I can fit my rewind button now. The rewind button is here, so I want a little bit of synthetic grease through the spring. Pass the button through the spring. Fit the washer in place. Holding my finger on the top of the shaft here, flip the camera over, screw that into the bottom of the sprocket shaft making sure that the screw passes through the washer isn't trapped holding the washer and I can tighten that up I hold my thumb on the sprocket do that up with my pliers that's in place and now as I revolve the sprocket here you'll see that the take up spool is also revolving because they're geared together now those two screws at the top here and here can be tightened up. Just release that again, that's better. As you press the rewind button, what happens is you press that it's latched into the up position by that sprung loaded lever we've put in. It lifts this gear higher than the gear it would couple with, so it means that the sprocket shaft can revolve freely. It's not driven by anything. The take up spool, of course, can be dragged backwards against its clutch without any effort at all. When the film advance is moved to the advanced position, let's just do that. It releases this arm here, allowing the rewind button to pop back down into position. And now the both shafts are coupled together again. That's going to require uh, at least a turn of tension on here prior to fitting the shutter cocking rack in place. I need to go and inspect my painting now and find out if it's any good. Well that paint might not be perfect but it's pretty good. That looks fine. 
So I'm sure that'll be good once it's got its um, leatherettes on here. This piece looks great. Looks absolutely marvellous. So this paint's nice and hard. It's come straight from the oven. So those pieces are ready to go. So I'm pleased to see that. I'm not sure whether I should have put the leatherette on here first or wait till I've got the whole camera assembled. I can put the back in place anyway on the body, I suppose. How does it compare with the original back? Well, I think it's pretty good. It's certainly got more gloss to the paint and the paint is all present. So the camera is well on the way to being restored, I suppose you could say. I was looking at this leatherette, replacement leatherette for the camera back. It appeared to me it was a little bit long. Certainly the width's fine, it appeared a bit long, so I'm checking it against the leatherette I've stripped off that back. And with that edge butted up neatly, you can see I've got a millimetre, perhaps a millimetre and a half of extra leatherette there. So I would say that I'm going to have to trim this before I put it in place. So I don't want to be fighting with it. It's um, getting leatherettes fitted. You want things to go very smoothly. You can't be pulling them off and trying to trim them and put them back. It won't lead to a good result. So I'm going to trim the length of this before I start. And I'll check that the ends are actually square. It's, it looks square, but when I measure it against the other thing, it didn't look particularly good. Yeah, but a millimetre or two has got to come off that. Otherwise, it's never going to fit in neatly against the hinge at this end of the door. Come on, camera, hurry up. Hinge at this end, or the bracket at the other end. It does have to fit in there very neatly. I'll warm up these leatherettes before I install them too. I'll need them to be very pliable because they're quite thick. And I'll need them to roll around and tuck in smoothly. Well, here's that other panel. You can see that the black paint is nice and shiny and complete. So that's our front panel there. That's all assembled. There was nothing to that, of course. All I had to do was put back through the few screws that I'd taken out in order to get this piece loose. I'll pop that to one side. Got to be better carry on with this camera body. I'll start with this strap lug, which is somewhat bent. See if I can encourage that a bit straighter. Yes, that looks good. And that strap lug goes up here at the rewind knob end of the top plate. The holes in the strap lug are slotted. So you can adjust the position of the strap lug and I have found from experience you want to press the strap lug towards the end of the camera body and do those screws up. At the other end of the top cover we've got to get our cocking rack and so forth in place here but it means I've got to wind up the tension on the film advance first. Got to pre-tension it. So normally I press the lock lever, swing that to one side so it's not fouling up the mechanism. 
hold my release lever away, rotate this clockwise one full turn, let the release lever drop back in, let the lock lever drop back into position. And at that stage, I can fit my advance lever. I'm going to put a short bottom cover, bottom trim on the body at this stage. It helps, it's just convenient. It stops the lock lever from swinging too far down as I'm working on the camera, so I'll find that. The film advance lever needs a new rubber buffer pad. The original one was um, perished and actually just fell out when I touched it. So some, some self-adhesive, closed cell foam. It'll do the job nicely. Is this camera going to focus? It's thinking about it. Close enough. Well, I can put my film advance lever in place. I had to. No, I'm going to put the shortened base plate in place first, aren't I? Yeah. That'll keep everything tidy. Two screws will suffice to hold that in position. And the film advance lever. I've found two more screws for that in my spare parts. That's the film advanced lever in place. Now the action should move fairly smoothly, and it does. If I press down the release button here, the release lever, hold down the lock lever, I can swing the film advance, runs through a full action without any problems at all. And now I want the cocking rack. And so for that I want my synthetic grease. I'll wipe some on the cocking rack, particular attention to the teeth. And that upper surface there. And this drops into the body. Now it just engages one tooth typically here. First tooth on the rack. There's that support bush. And here we have the, bracket, the strap lug bracket. Now the screw that goes through that support bush has a, is a special, it's got a special section of the shaft that runs through the support bush and holds it firmly. It doesn't look like the other screws. And it's just a plain screw over here. bracket that holds this rack in place has to be swung into place over the rack. That's held down with two screws. Now as I discovered once I'd done a head count of fasteners after I disassembled the camera, one of the screws holding this down was one that should have been holding down the chrome top plate, top cover, but wasn't because there were no screws holding the top cover in place. Right, let's see what happens. The cocking rack moves. It moves smoothly. Returns to the rest position. It's not over tight. That's good. That's a good result. When the ca I disassembled the camera, there was a shim underneath the plate here. 
or underneath one of these plates which would have had the effect of allowing more play between the rack and the mechanism here. Often when you're re reassembling an old camera it is worn to such an extent that they don't need you don't need extra shims to provide you with the free space. There's enough free space already just from wear and tear. So that part is looking pretty good. I would say that uh, that's good. I, that's just about ready now to have the uh, shutter assembly fitted to the body. Oh, the meter of course has to go on before I do that. I won't do that until I'm ready. What happens when you're assembling the meter is the meter goes on the top you have to have your shutter release components sitting in place. The cord runs over the drums, around this one, around the drum at the bottom there. And the meter is exceptionally easy to displace if you don't have a top cover on there holding it firmly in place. I've got a part cover that I use for doing that job. But um, I don't need to do anything at the moment because really I can't go any further until the shutter's been serviced and reassembled to that uh, front panel which is waiting for that part to happen too. And I think that might do it for today. The camera back looks good. That'll be even better once I get that leatherette on there. I will have to trim that leatherette. I'll probably trim it to full 2mm. I don't want any any fighting at all when I come to get that in place. I need it to fit neatly up against the in, in the recess at both ends. I've already checked it for width across here. It's, it's great. It's a good fit. And I've checked the leatherettes to see how they fit on the base. That, that looked very good too. The leatherettes on the front I don't know so much about. Um, I'll have to wait and see where they end up. They may or may not cause me a problem. The leatherettes typically slide in underneath the edge here. Well, there's room for them to slide in underneath the edge. If they're too thick, they won't want to go. That's a bridge I'll have to cross when I come to it. 